Dear students, let's discuss uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic from a medical legal perspective. So, is it aut autopsy necessary for these cases? Ideally, no, right? It is better not to uh, uh, go ahead with the autopsy procedure because of the spread of uh, infection. Like, it is ideal not to proceed, I mean, go ahead with the autopsy. But if at all we want to do autopsy, we can go ahead with the clinical or pathological autopsy. But wherein we need to get consent, we need to get consent from the legal guardian. That is highly necessary. And as far as uh, the procedure is concerned, the personnel who are involved in this procedure should follow proper recommendation. You should have proper protective, personal protective equipments, right? The person should have uh, gloves, right? While he is uh, handling the infectious materials. You should avoid the risk of needle cuts, puncture wounds and other injuries. The person should have a long sleeved fluid resistant gown that is to protect the skin and the clothing, right? The person should have goggles to fa protect the face, eyes and the nose, right? And uh, these are the minimum recommendations, surgical gloves, impermeable gown, waterproof apron, okay, face shield and the respirator, okay? These are the minimum recommendations the, uh, while the person is doing autopsy, right? And during the procedure, the person should follow standard precautions, contact precautions, airborne precautions, all these precautions should be taken. One of the most important thing is the person should not have this oscillating bone saw because it will increase, it will increase aerosols, right? So if at all the person is uh, going ahead with the oscillating saw, the oscillating saw should be attached to a vacuum so that it will contain the aerosols, the spread of infection is lesser or the person can use anxious as well right and as far as possible the minimum you should restrict the number of people who are involved in the autopsy room so that we can have the procedure safely done right now coming to the collection of samples while we do autopsy what are the samples we need to collect right one of the most important thing is we need we can collect the nasopharyngeal swab right we can collect the nasopharyngeal swab by inserting a swab into the nostrils parallel to the palate right we can keep it uh, leave there for a few seconds it will absorb all the secretions right and we can also uh, preserve this oropharyngeal swab right particularly from the posterior pharynx right if at all we are going for fixed tissue autopsy tissue specimens right we need to have minimum of eight blocks from the respiratory sites itself in addition to that, we need to collect the major organs which are significantly involved. Among the respiratory sites, we need to have uh, a tissue from the trachea, prime and proximal and distal. In addition to that, that primary bronchus, right and left. Okay, we should also take uh, samples from the pulmonary parenchyma as well. Okay, so these are the tissue samples we need to collect, and uh, the recovery of the virus will be maximum when it is from the larger airways. Okay. Coming to the autopsy findings, the results which were revealed by the autopsy of done in China, it was uh, revealing that uh, the changes were noted in the lung, uh, mainly of pneumonetic changes. The other uh, organs were uh, showing non-specific findings, right? Coming to the ethical aspects while we are treating this patient. Should a doctor maintain professional secrecy? See, this is one of the most important uh, 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 duty for a doctor. Whenever he is dealing with such patient, it is his uh, legal duty. It is his legal and ethical duty to intimate, to notify the higher authorities, public health authorities. Here, there is no need of professional secrecy, right? See, we call it as privileged communication, right? In the interest of the society, we need to breach this professional secrecy. We need to intimate the higher authorities. And this is a legal duty, right? If you are not revealing, notifying this to the public authority, it is punishable, okay? Fine. And a doctor, while we are treating this uh, coronavirus patient, we should always respect the patient privacy, okay, not to disclose the identi identity details of this patient, not revealing the photograph or not revealing the name of this patient. It is ideal not to reveal. We should respect the patient privacy. Can a doctor refuse to treat uh, a patient of coronavirus? Though we don't have a legal compulsion, right, we have ethical compulsion, okay, as per uh, the Code of Medical Ethics. Professional Conduct Etiquette and uh, Ethics Regulation 2002, we have certain duties. Uh, the physicians have got a duty to the, towards the public, right, and the community health. 
the physician should enlighten the public right regarding the quarantine regulations not only about that about the prevention of such epidemic diseases among the public right he should also notify this public health authorities whenever he come across every case of such communicable diseases and when an epidemic is occurs a physician should not abandon his duty for the fear of getting the disease itself right it is his ethical duty to treat a patient fine what are the duties of the hospital as such right it is a duty to report to the higher authorities whenever the hospital is receiving any such patient duty for the timely referral right for any complication which is arising out of this particular disease it is duty of the hospital to timely refer and proper isolation if the patient is hospitalized it isn't if the patient is hospitalized it is the responsibility of the hospital and the healthcare professional to give a proper isolation to the patient and we should also take care of the hospital also i have to take care of the safety measures for the healthcare professionals not only the doctors but also the paramedics who is dealing with this patients right and that the hospital should also create awareness among the general public right epidemic diseases act right this is one uh, very important act which uh, we need to discuss we need to have some knowledge about this epidemic diseases act right the government of india has invoked the provisions of epidemic diseases act few days back here uh this actually the epidemic disease act was enacted in the year 1897 whenever we came across the epidemic diseases the government of india was using the provisions of such act and now again we are using the provisions this is one of the very shortest act which just got only four sections right the section 1 it was describing uh, the definitions and the titles the section 2 of epidemic diseases act whenever the existing regulations of the central government and state government is not enough to control the spread of such diseases the state government and the central government they are empowered to have uh, special regulations for such diseases right they are empowered to have special regulations for such uh, diseases to contain the spread to control the spread of such diseases it also includes it also empowers the state government or the central government to detain for the detention of people or any uh, vessel or uh, or ship or coming from abroad for uh, I mean decreasing the spread of the diseases into the country right it is also empowering the government to have proper quarantine of the people who are exposed to the disease right and any person who's disobeying okay remember the section 3 any person who is violating such regulations will be punished okay with the section 188 ipc the 188 ipc it actually says that disobedience to the order which was enacted by the public servant right it is it is punishable with 188 ipc with 6 months imprisonment with or without fine section 4 of this epidemic diseases act it gives the legal protection for the officers who are implementing such act you cannot have any legal proceedings for the officers who are who are implementing the attack such so we have got only four sections right so we have come across few uh, instances of uh, the patients or the people who are exposed to the disease or escaping from the isolation measures so these uh, kind of actions or uh, can be punishable with uh, section 3 of in epidemic disease act okay that is your 188 ipc not only that the patients can also be a uh, punished with section 271 ipc disobedience to the quarantine rule what if a patient intentionally spreads a disease there are few uh, news which are spreading right people who are intentionally coughing out to the normal public right just to uh, spread the disease or deliberately spreading the disease or people who are escaping from the isolation procedures and uh, negligently spreading the disease to another people will also be punished with these two sections section 269 and 270 Section two sixteen and IPC any negligent act likely to spread the infection, okay, likely to spread the infection will be punished with two sixty nine IPC six months imprisonment, and two seventy any malignant act likely to spread the infection, right, which is uh, I mean uh, which can cause which is dangerous to life. Section two sixty nine and two seventy negligent act a patient negligently is spreading the disease to another person. Malignant attack a patient intentionally spreading the disease to another person. So both will be punished with two sixty nine and two seventy respectively. Okay, six two six months of imprisonment and two years of uh, imprisonment.